Welcome everyone, MTG Deck Masters. Today we're going to start a new series card called Card Spotlight. In this series I'm going to uh, pick a random card. Well, not random, but I'm going to pick a card and talk about uh, how the card is broken in certain formats and uh, is it underrated or overrated. Today I'm going to talk about how Arkham's Astrolabe is completely broken. This card needs to be banned in every format it's legal in, except maybe Commander. Here's why. Okay, so let's start off with a little bit of background. Arkham's Astrolabe was printed in Modern Horizons last summer, in summer of 2019. Uh, when I first read the card, I thought it was some random filler, like, sure, one mana, draw a card, and you can fix your mana. But still, it doesn't impact the battlefield. Uh, you need snow land, so you have to uh, build around it. So I was like, maybe if you draft snow archetype in draft, and your deck is not very good, and you open an Arkham's Astrolabe, well, it can be the 40th card in your deck. But this turned out to be extremely wrong, because this card right now is the second most played card in Modern, just under Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt, the staple of a staple played in every single red deck. But Arkham's Astrolabe can be played in every single deck, period. Except maybe for some broken combo decks like Neo Brand. But even then, I've seen some lists of broken combo decks, not Neo Brand, play Arkham's Astrolabe. Uh, it's played in uh, Urza decks because even though Mox Opal is banned, who cares when you have Arkham's Astrolabe to generate extra artifacts uh, for Urza to tap for mana and fix your mana so you can play four colors uh, or three colors if you're less degenerate but you can still play any card you want because uh, you can basically splash any color in an Urza deck uh, it's also played in five color niv Mizzet to fix your mana so a five color deck is viable in modern um, that's about the it for Arkham's Astrolabe in Modern. Of course, it's played in plenty, plenty of other decks, but these are the tier 1 decks where Arkham's Astrolabe is played. I have even seen some Jund lists play Snowlands to play Arkham's Astrolabe just to put Blood Moon in the sideboard because there's no, there's not really a build around to play Arkham's Astrolabe. It doesn't really matter uh, that it's a snow artifact and Snowlands are free to play in your deck. Uh, there's no difference between playing snow lands and regular basic lands in your deck. They are basic lands. So playing Arkham's Astrolabe is free. Uh, in a deck that can afford to play uh, four or more basic lands. Because uh, you can fetch them with fetch lands, of course. So Arkham's Astrolabe is completely ridiculous in modern. Next, Legacy. Oh boy. Legacy is a hundred times worse. In Legacy, right now, the most played deck is the most ridiculous deck I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to do a deck tech on it because it's just so hilarious. It's a 5-color mid-range deck that plays Oko, Tif Oko, Teferi, Arkham's Astrolabe, Ice Fang Coldal, Uro, Force of Negation. So, 6 of the major staples of the deck that are, that are not 1-ofs, like 3 to 4 ofs are from 2019. Hmm? So take that as a note, Wizards. 2019 was not a good year and you should make lower power level cards because you're breaking magic right now. Uh, these cards are overpowered. And being able to play a five color deck uh, in Legacy as a tier one deck when most of your lands are basic lands is completely ridiculous because you cannot even hate it with Blood Moon or Magus of the Moon because these freaking lands are snow covered basic lands and arkham's astrolabe fixes your mana anyway so who cares even the five color deck can play blood moon so even if their fetch lands are turned into mountains not a big deal because you can tap arkham's astrolabe to turn the red mana into mana of any color so arkham's astrolabe is completely broken in legacy there are also other decks like doomsday which i absolutely love that become uh, very powerful because of Arkham's Astrolabe because it's a cantrip that can, can, that can fix your mana because Doomsday uh, before Astrolabe had problems 
for the triple black for Doomsday. But now you can play S per Doomsday with green for Veil of Summer and um, don't even worry about your mana. You don't even need to play four Lotus Petal. They play only one or two. And they only play one Lion's Eye Diamond right now because Arkham's Astrolabe fixes everything. It draws cards. You can put it in a Doomsday pile so you can play it, draw a card and chain into the pile. Uh, you can have it into play when you play Doomsday even if you have no cards in hand so you can fix your mana even though you have no cards in hand. That's ridiculous. So anyway, ah, I thought I was done but there's Popper. So in Popper, uh, if you didn't know what happened, the card got banned a few months ago. Got banned, uh, I think, a month or two after it released because this is a common. And it was played in every single deck. And when I say every single deck, I mean every single deck. Damn near 100% of the decks in the metagame played Arkham's Astrolabe. The only deck that didn't try it was Burn. Burn. So it gives you an idea. Arkham's Astrolabe... Four dimensions, for the reasons I mentioned earlier in the video, was played in every single popper deck. There were some five color Tron decks and uh, Scred decks that played this, so yeah. So, anyway, I hope that was enough to convince you that Arkham's Astrolabe is uh, a bad magic card that doesn't deserve to exist. And I hope it, it will, I hope it gets banned in Modern and Legacy. And I'm not a big vintage player, so I can't. Um, explain a lot of bad things about the card in Vintage but it's really played everywhere even in Vintage so I hope you enjoyed the video feel free to leave your comments and your thoughts about Arkham's Astrolabe down below in the comments because I absolutely hate this card 